to be in his presence. What a beautiful name it is this morning. The beautiful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. As we start off in our other prayer, I want to encourage all those online this morning to join us this morning. This is, this is the day the Lord has made. We will glad and rejoice in it. We will rejoice. Hallelujah. Eternal Father, Lord Jesus, O oh God, we come to you again another time this Sunday morning, Lord, to worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for this day, Lord. This is the day, Lord, you have made, Lord. And Father, we thank you, O oh God, for all the women, all the mothers of this world today, Lord Jesus. Lord, today is Mother's Day, Lord, and we, and we will celebrate with them, O oh God. Because, Lord, our mothers, O oh God, who was here with us, Lord, and who has gone beyond, O oh God. Father, we thank you for them, Lord Jesus, O oh God. Because, Lord, if it wasn't for our mothers, Lord, we wouldn't have to be standing here today, Lord. Because, Lord, the sacrifice whatsoever they have to give us life this day, Lord Jesus. And, Lord, we thank you for them, Lord Jesus. Father, as the world celebrates Mother's Day, Lord, those who are in distress this morning, O oh God, Father, give them that strength, Lord. Give them that courage, O oh God, that they will live, Lord Jesus, O oh God. Father, we worship you, Lord. We praise your name, Lord Jesus, O oh God. Father, we bless you, O oh God, even at this time, Lord Jesus, O oh God. Father, if, if it's not for you, O oh God, for your grace and for your, your mercies this morning, O oh God, where would we be this morning, Lord? We thank you for your grace and we thank you for your mercies, O oh God. Lord, your mercies are renewed every morning and your mercies are enduring forever, Lord. Father, we give you all the honor, the praise, and the glory this morning, Lord Jesus, O oh God. Father, I pray, O oh God, for the preach word this morning, O oh God. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that that preach word will go forth with power and authority this morning, O oh God. Father, I pray, O oh God, for release of your anointing over your people this morning. I pray for release of your blessings upon your people right now. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you will fill this place with your anointing. Fill it up, O oh God. Lord, we need you, Lord. We need you without you in our lives, O oh God. Father, where, we, where would we have been this day, Lord? So, Father, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord. Father, let your Holy Spirit rain down, Lord. Rain down from heaven, Lord Jesus, O oh God. Father, I pray, O oh God, for the worship ministers as they come to worship before your grace of shown this morning, O oh God. Lord, you bless them, Lord. Father, I pray for our musicians, Lord. Father, strengthen them, O oh God. Father, we thank you, Lord. Father, I pray, O oh God, for our pastor this morning. Glad to have him back this morning, Lord. Glad to be in his presence, O oh God. Father, we thank you for him and his family this morning, O God. Lord Jesus, O God, you know, you see everything about them, Lord Jesus, O God. And Lord, we will never fail to give you the honor, the praise, and the glory, Lord. Father, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Father, I pray, O God, that in our weaknesses, O God, and Lord, all of us have weaknesses, O God. Lord, you will strengthen us, O God. Strengthen us, O God, that we will serve you, Lord Jesus, O God. Father, we thank you, Jesus. We bless your name. We honor your name this morning, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Oh, God, there is none like you, Lord. Father, I pray, oh, God, that you will pull down every stronghold and strong arm of the enemy, Lord. Father, you make his works powerless, Lord. Father, those who are watching online this morning, oh, God, no matter what we are, what you are going through this morning, Lord, Father, oh God, just call upon that name of Jesus and you will be saved this morning, oh God. Lord, you are my Savior. Oh God, you are my redeeming comforter, Lord. Lord, when things are not working out my way, Lord, I will still praise you. I will still worship you in good times and in bad times. Oh God, in rich times and in poor times, I will still praise you, Lord, no matter what we are going through. No matter what this world is going to, Lord, oh God, use Alpha and Omega, and Lord, no weapon, Lord, no weapon formed against me shall prosper, and it 
will never prosper because Lord I have I know a great God and he is above Lord he is above watching them this morning oh God so father we thank you Jesus for everything that you have done and things which you are about to do God because Lord we put our trust in you God we put our confidence in our God whom we serve and Lord we know we serve a great God so father we thank you this morning oh God we thank you Jesus in the blessed and mighty name of Jesus thank you Lord as I give way praise the Lord Jesus hallelujah we want to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers again hallelujah <laughs> praise the Lord brother Nathan and we want to come this morning together in worship to give God praise this morning so we want to say I love you to all the mothers and we want to also declare our love for God this morning Praise the Lord Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you cared for me in such a special way. And so I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. Why my heart is filled with praise. Sing, I love you, Lord. I love you, I love you, love you, love you, Lord. I love you, Lord, today. Because you cared for me. Because you cared for me. In such a special way. In such a special way. So I Oh, yeah. 
is what I need. Holiness, holiness, holiness is what you want from me. Is what you want from me. Sing righteousness. Righteousness, righteousness is what I long for. Righteousness, righteousness is what I need. Righteousness, righteousness, righteousness is what you want from me. So take my heart, Lord, and mold it. Take my heart
thank you for hearing our cry this morning, Lord Jesus. Thank you for attending on to our prayer this morning. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hear my cry, O oh Lord. Attend on to my prayer. From the ends of the earth, when I cry out to thee. For when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than high. That is higher than high. Hear my cry, O oh Lord. Hear my cry, O oh Lord. I tell on to my prayer. From the ends of the earth. From the ends of the earth.
start you've got Satan you can't prevail Satan you're bound to fail And you're standing on a solid rock And you know the power that you've got
just as the people were marching around the walls of Jericho Lord. hallelujah what seemed impossible you see they got together they got together in one accord in one accord and started marching that one step and two step sounded like a multitude that the walls had to come down hallelujah I don't know about you but I just feel like dancing this morning I, just, I, just, I don't know about you but the drama the drama just give me that beat give me that beat hey the type of beat that he displayed that somehow I feel like I was in the army yeah, marching around the Jericho yeah. that when they call on the hour to shout I shouted when they call on the second hour yeah. to shout I shouted when they call on the third fourth fifth Somebody walk. Walk around your wall. Walk around your wall. Walk around the wall. Walk around the wall. Sickness. Sickness. We walking around sickness. We walking around every disease. Every firmament. Every hallelujah. Every curse. Every curse. Yeah. Somebody said. Oh. Yeah. Come on, come on.
that you've been fighting that fight and the walls are there before you and you need something to happen you need a block you need some walls you need something to start tumbling down all you need to do is to praise God all you need to do is shout because God has given us the victory victory is mine I have victory victory in Jesus oh I Jehovah God, there is no God like Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. His name is, His name is, hallelujah, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, hallelujah, oh boy, oh boy. Let's clap our hands for the worshipers. We, 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 we are so caught up in the natural. And as believers, our battle, our fight is not in the natural. It is in the spiritual realm. So to the unbelievers or to the unbelieving, when we start dancing and pulling and fighting and shoving and kicking and pulling and doing something in the natural, it seems like we are crazy. But let me tell somebody this morning, in the spiritual, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So I need somebody this morning to understand that your battle is not here. Your battle is up there. And this is where you need to go. Hallelujah. Take your seats, take your seats. I won't have you long. Firstly, I have an order in, in, in written down in my mind here how to do this thing. Firstly, I would say happy Mother's Day to all our mothers. Yes, mothers that gave birth, mothers that adopted, mothers that are single, mothers by affiliation. Mothers who never actually bore a child, but rare a child. Mothers and grandmothers and all those who were so important. I heard the deacon said, without our mamas, we would not be here. The daddies are important too, but without mommy, there would not be a womb. Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands for the mothers this morning. Hallelujah. Secondly, I want you to give yourself a clap. Those who are even online, I greet you in Jesus' name. But the audience, I need you to clap yourselves this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, you're clapping yourself. You can appreciate yourself. Hallelujah. Yes, Tamaya. That's it. Glitz and glamour. Feel good about yourself. Hallelujah. Um, <clears throat> the reason... We were absent, my family and I were absent for over two weeks because of COVID. And thank God, we got the strain that has been weakened down to the, what we call, what they consider the normal flu now or the Omicron and what stage it has reached. I want to tell the church, I viewed online and I had a wonderful time. time. Tears flowed, joy flowed. And I felt like dancing and jumping while I was there listening. I would thank God for our deacons who, who held the fort and did a really wonderful job. And everybody, everybody, I, I, if I got to call Liam, I had a detail, but I need to say this also. Thank God for the preacher. 
Hallelujah. Thank God for the preacher. One week she gave us soup, and the other week she gave us the cup. <laughs> Hallelujah. And while she was preaching about soup, I said, I wish if I get some cow heel soup. But I thank God for the church that is moving on. And if pre adventure had gone in the way of COVID, I would have died peacefully in my death, knowing that there are others to take over. Knowing that there are others to carry on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not a lot of preachers could say that. We reach the age of 70 and 80 and still holding on. Can't even move and walk and we're still holding on. I am a visionary. I've told you that at the beginning. I'm not yet a manager. I'm a visionary. I have vision. And while we were singing and dancing, I looked at the young children and I said, we need, to, I, I mean, forcefully, now I'm going to say this on the pulpit and online, we need to get them involved in the worship. Hallelujah. We need to get them involved in the worship. Put some dress on, some flags in their hand. The worship team step back to the top here and get them in front, dancing around, waving and kicking and dancing and doing somersaults and all these things because they could fight real good in school. They could beat up children and climb up cars and, and, and pull the weave and the wigs off. Then they, if they could do that in their schools and they could play games and, and go on Fortnite and, and, and call out all the ARs and all the guns that I don't even know about. If they could do that, then they could praise God. Then they could worship God. Because truth be told, God's spirit in life, they will get older and they will feel what we feel on a morning. That when you're younger, Tamaya, you jump off the bed. When you go down and you get older, you take time to come off. And you young people laugh, you go reach the day. Deacon Williams, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> So thank God, I start my preaching yet, so no time, but I just greet in the church and we, we had a wonderful time looking at you all. It was shared and people call. The videos were shared and the preacher have preaching engagement. The doctor have preaching engagement. All you go hear about it. All you go hear. And I also want to tell you that we went through a time I, I don't know if my resistance had dropped so low that I got it the worst um, children I didn't see anything too wrong with them Michael somebody say he have Kubo's stomach nothing to bother him my wife had it for one night and one day and that's it I got fever for four days and it took a toll on me <clears throat> when people say that they went through sickness and they felt depressed and felt like that other week after the fever and all the pain and all that I went through Deacon Bedrick every old injury every old injury that I didn't even remember hurt exposed dentine and everything was hurting at the same time and amazingly I had a caretaker who find who found joy in taking a wet rag and just touching my body with it to hear me cry out found joy Michaela daddy take off the shit but amazingly also for my knees up were burning the gun that we have every time you press it I first time I saw it red but from a knee down was cold like ice I don't know what was going on and cramps and cramps and cramps but I am here this morning and I have voice because the preacher before me preached with some voice and I heard her in a in a what a, I don't know a different tone there this morning uh, preaching and, and speaking and I say wow long time I hear that voice hallelujah thank God for worshipers one thing I must I observe I said to one uh, uh, the worship leader, the manager, I said, 
They sang all of our songs for that two weeks, boy. And I was begging them to sing our songs when I have to preach sometime. At the beginning, or probably all. But then we just laugh about it. And to all the mothers, I'm very different to certain things. And it's expectation that Mother's Day would have a mother's message. But we will have a mother's day in another month. But I have something for you all which I think will benefit everybody. I said to Deacon Williams, I said, so what you cooking for the lady? And he jokingly said, me are no mother. <laughs> That's not my mother. I jokingly, and he said, me, me cooking nothing. <laughs> but I thank God for everyone that came out this morning. We have in Sunday school, all uh, right, you can be excused. And yet keep them around. Sunday school. So bear with me <clears throat> because um, the virus left me with a dryness in my throat. And I, I don't know those of you who have been uh, experienced COVID and I heard I'll, I'll ask a lot of people they say it's not a cold or anything it's just a dry cough that, that is there for a, a while. What it has left me with with its weakness. I said to them, I know. I don't take for granted when I see older people taking time to walk and move. I was walking about six feet away and then reaching into the bed. Just lying down. I was weak. I was feeling out of it. I didn't want to talk to nobody. I didn't want to hear nobody. I just wanted to lie down there. And more I lie down, the more depressed I felt. And I said, God, one night, I felt like I was going, boy. I, I felt like I couldn't breathe. And I, 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 more I thought about it, is the more my chest locked up. And, and I felt like, what going on, what going on? Not knowing some spit or swallow. And God is so good that we, two years and we just get it. And it is just weakened on to that. We didn't get the delta. We didn't get the, the, the when it now started. I thank God. And we also want to pray for Sister Sally and Brother Jared and her son Liam. And that family, the Goitia family, who now uh, they are not too well, but we are praying for them in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's go to the text. Uh, two weeks you haven't heard my voice. And if I was there that two weeks when the preacher was preaching and she took the mic this morning and say that was the message. Need some walls to come down this morning, right? I, I will say that again and I was hope I'll get some more amen. Every one of us have some walls to come down. And the devil, it seems, is a master mason who lays that block skillfully. But we have a master carpenter. His name is Jesus. And no weapon. Thank you for that one clap, brother. No weapon. No weapon. Uh, St. Mark chapter 8. St. Mark chapter 8. I, I know they're telling me about glasses, but since I got sick, I can't read too much I can't look at anything for too long because and the doctor said that's normal because every day the doctor I, I don't know but every day the doctor called to find out how you're going what you're drinking I, I, I drink coconut water eat a lot of soup um, take your vitamin and all these things and they call every day to make sure, probably to make sure you're home <laughs> hallelujah but and I just want to tell those who are looking online and those that are here pray for our frontline workers because I spoke to him and I said I, ex I said quickly I want to tell you this um, while I was there for the second week I experienced a little depression and he said oh, it's happening all over and they these frontline workers they he said it to me they are going through that but they have to come out they are overworked they are overwhelmed they feel sometimes they go home and they just can't even think straight so we need to keep them in your prayer, okay? They are overworked. When you go to the hospitals, don't quarrel. Don't, don't, first, don't, don't get vexed because they are trying their best. Praise the name of our Lord. 
So St. Mark chapter 8, I'll give you enough time to find it on your copies of your Bible. And I need to say that because some of you have your phone, tablet, your hard written copy. But whatever copy you have, you can follow on in Jesus' name. Let's read from verse 22. And he cometh to Bethsaida. And they bring, they bring him. In the New International Version, you'll hear they brought a, a blind man unto him. And besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand. And led him out of the tongue. And he took the blind man by the hand. And led him out of the tongue. And when he had spit <clears throat> on his eyes. And put his hands upon him. He asked him if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. And that, after that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up. And he was restored and saw every man clearly. And he sent him away to his house saying, either go into tongue, nor tell it to any in the tongue. Praise the name of our Lord. Father, we pray that you bless your word and preach up your word and the heroes of your word. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. Uh, when we read, and I always, say, I always tell the, the, the saints, when we read it, the Bible, don't just take it on face value. Now we are blessed with Google so we can Google stuff. We can look at stuff. One preacher some years ago said we have gargle, so we can gargle it. Amen. Ah, <laughs> uh, catch your breath here. When when um, we were in Bible teaching and we had teachers, one thing I did in um, how the scriptures came to be, we recognized that one of the first gospel writers was Mark. He wrote nearly 30 years after the death of Jesus Christ. He wrote, and most theologians will tell you that the other writers, if you need to follow the stories of Matthew, the synoptic gospels, it's called, Matthew, Luke, and, and John, and others, you would refer to Mark. Because when you read the book of Mark, Mark just writes as um, just giving you information. There's no, um, like Matthew and others who trace the lineage of Jesus and all these things. He just put information out because he realized that the story was being spoken to and eventually nobody would remember or the story will change. So as a, a Mark, not really a disciple of Jesus, he started to write the information and share it around to the church and to unbelievers. He was with Paul Mark, and that is what he did. So he was not even a Jew. Now said on that, so Mark wrote, um, we read in this now, we just read this and go on from a miracle to a teaching and whatever, and we just read it for information. However, the first century writers of the Bible, they wrote to the Jewish population and the Jewish people that were reading it, they understood it better. What I mean by this, here in Mark chapter 8 verse 22 and on, you would read, you read about the blind man that they brought to Jesus. But if you read before, you would read about the feeding of the 4,000 and the 5,000. And if you read after, you would read the question is asked, to the disciples, who do men say that I am? All right? So let's get into it. In the, the, the verses before, Jesus feeds uh, 4,000 with seven loaves. This is beside the, the 5,000. And another time. But he feeds 4,000 with seven loaves. And they pick up seven baskets. However, that's 
basket was a, a, that's baskets of, of, of remnants of the fish and the bread. And now the scribe and Pharisees, they're saying to Jesus, before he gets into the boat, we want to see some miracle, something. I mean, I just fed 4,000 people with seven loaves of bread. What greater miracle do you want? But they were looking for signs and wonders. And they get into the boat. And while they, the disciples realized that they had one loaf of bread. And they started to talk among themselves that, Oh, we are here and we are hungry. We go surely starve. So Jesus overhears or he's hearing what they're, they're saying and, and know what they're thinking. And he tells them, and I had to correct them. He says, you don't believe. You really don't believe. Because I was now with you on the shore. And I took seven loaves and I feed 4,000. And here you are scrabbling and, and quarreling about what we go eat. You should have more faith than that. Just to put it in the hands of Jesus. And believe that if Jesus could feed 4,000, much less for 12 people. Hallelujah. Do you know that when you put it in the hands of the Lord, it is like yeast in flour. You put a little dough, but you put a little pinch of yeast, and next thing when you leave it to set, you see that the thing has risen and overflowing sometime. When you take your issues, when you take your problem, when you take your circumstances, when you take your sickness, when you take whatever you're going through and you put it in the hands of the Lord, he takes it, he takes it and he multiplies it and he blesses it and he hands you back whatever little that you gave, he gives you back surplus. A message for another time. So, they, 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 in other words, they are not seeing Jesus for who he really is. Now, after the story of the blind man, he stands and he asks them, Who do men say that I am? And they answered, Men say that you are John the, the Baptist, and you are Elijah, you are this, you that. And he asks now, he said, But who do you say that I am? And Peter stood up and he said to him, Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Now, if I lost you there, think about this. Before the healing of the blind man, they are doubting. They have no vision. They cannot see Jesus for who he is. After the healing of the blind man, now they have vision. They are seeing who Jesus really is. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. So the writer puts the story of the blind man right there to teach the first century church that you must have vision amen somebody that you must have vision that you could be with jesus but still go to hell because you don't have jesus or you don't see him for who he really is you might see him because you can get some bread and fish and you can get supplies and you can get healing and you can get that and you can be far away from relationship with the man Christ Jesus. In other words, you can be in church and very far from the Lord. You can be in the house of God every Sunday for 52 um, Sundays of the year and whatever have you. And you can be very far from God on your way to hell. Because it is not about religion. It is about relationship. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. You can know. Uh, thank you Holy Spirit. You know, when we see somebody famous. See somebody famous. You tell people, hey, that my second cousin, Chiren, so, so, so. Or oh, that, that person, yeah, I know him, you know. That my father, ex-wife, child, so, so, so. We related. You ain't know how you're related, but because they're famous, if he's a politician, if he's a prime minister, if he's the opposition, yeah, 
me and Cam say we're real good. That when, and we start talking. But the question is, do they know you? Do they know you? Because you know them. But do they know you? You can be in the boat with Jesus. You can be in the house with Jesus. You can be in the sanctuary where Jesus is and be so far away at the same time. Somebody clap your hands. If you don't remember anything I'm going to say after this, just remember that. So here it is. The writer puts the healing of the blind man right before they doubted and after they really had vision. So it's basically to teach them to have some vision. But I'm not speaking about vision. I'm speaking about the right touch from Jesus. The right touch is from Jesus. Uh, these people, they brought the man to Jesus. And if you do a little study there, you'd realize that, that in the Greek, that word brought or to bring him has more meaning than we just read. It, it really means that they dragged into force or they held him and against his will to bring him to Jesus. And we have to understand that the people, they bring him to Jesus. And I want to tell you this morning, thank God when you have good people around. When you have good friends around. When you have people who would intercede on your behalf. Sometimes we get through in life or things did not happen to us. It's not because we are all that on a bag of chips. It's because somebody was praying on their knees for you and I this morning. You might have a good mother, a grandmother. You might have a good husband, a good wife, a good sister, a good brother. Somebody in the house of God say, Lord, remember this one. And the minute the devil tried to intercede is the minute the prayer went out. And somebody was with hell. Sometimes we in our own foolishness. And because we didn't get down to that road or go down that road to destruction. Because prayer was keeping us up and alive. So the people, they had good intentions. Thank God for relationship. Thank God for relationship. I must draw a quick illustration here. In the book of beginnings, in the book of Genesis, God created man. And then he said, man, it is not good for man to be alone. We will create a suitable helpmeet. But the, the question is, man was not alone. Man had God. And you know, we say when we have God, we have everything. But God wanted to place in humanity relationship. And if you read your Bible carefully, you realize it says, man should not be alone and then create animals and the beasts and everything else. He didn't create Eve yet. And Adam was there and everything seemed good. But God said, I need relationship. I need something to happen among humans that I would, I am there, yeah, I am God, but they would understand better. So while all the beasts were there portraying and moving, Adam could not find a suitable help meet. A message could get out of that. Don't go chasing after the beasts and, and think that is your blessing. Leave the beasts alone because your blessing come in. Somebody say amen. And then he created the relationship God place. Because people would say, thank God that God did this and God did that. I am no way taking anything from God. But God strategically placed people in our lives to uphold our hand, to pray for us, to encourage us, to pat us on our back, to, or to even correct us, to tell us things that we need to hear, not that we want to hear. Somebody say amen. 
And if you have a good friend like that, if you have somebody in your life, you need to keep them close because they are sent by God. You know, when you have good people, you will know that they don't support your weaknesses. When you have good people in your life, they will make you get agitated and aggravated because they know that you can achieve much more and they will push you to achieve more. They would not let you settle because they know there's a purpose and there's a plan of God on your life. And if you remain at this level here, my God, you would not achieve and fulfill your purpose. So I'm going to push you. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to push you. Somebody say amen. If you have people who are wrong you and there are times when we need, yes, I understand. And we need to be emotional. And yes, I know. And I feel it. And I pray for you. But there comes a time when we need to let somebody know or tell that person enough is enough. You are better than that. You are called by God. You are chosen by God. You're the apples of God. You're the apple of God's eye. You need to get up now and move up. There is a time for everything under the sun. And I heard the writer said, there's a time for peace, there's a time for war, there's a time for mourning, there's a time for joy. And he said, there's a time for war. So we need to get up in this time that we live and realize that we are at war and we are fighting and the enemy is real. Somebody say amen. Look at the schools, look at our country, look at Ukraine, look around the world. It's real. So Jesus, the people bring him, they brought this man. You know what I like? This man is blind. Amen? We can see that. But the people that brought the man, they could see. Amen? They could see. Because the people wanted the man to experience the blessings that they have, that he don't have. So whether or not he was kicking, crying, biting, they brought him to the right one, to Jesus, and said, if anybody could do this, it had to be Jesus. Because after all, he just feed 5,000. After all, he just feed 4,000. After all, he raised the dead. After all, he healed and he delivered. He, if anybody could do this, is Jesus. Somebody say amen. So they, 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 they ask, they say, Jesus, if you can just touch him. The people, normally when we talk about people in church, sometimes we sit in a negative light to tell, warn people about stay away from this one and that one. And the bad and the demonic. And don't go close to them because the spirit go jump on you. You, you ever hear that? Don't, don't go close. The spirit go jump on you. If I am mature and I'm sanctified and I'm Holy Ghost filled and I am a child of God, what spirit could jump on me? Think about that. But this text here to give, uh, uh, um, to, to stick to the text, the people, they bring him and they say, Jesus, touch him. But look what Jesus does he takes the man from the people and he walks away with him he took the bible says he took from the people and he walks away with him i my english might not be good in this but yes some of us that needs to be took from the people yes some of us needs to be taken from the crowd. Yes, some of us needs to all the noise and all that is going on. We need to be taken from that to some place of solitude that we can hear the voice of God. Amen, somebody. I know there's a time when we need people around. And yes, I'm not against that. But there are times when we need to stop listening there and start listening up there. And the only way we can hear clearly is to go by ourselves. 
The sister touched on it. She said, when Jesus took them into the garden, he went by himself. Because if he had the crowd, they might have said to him, Jesus, you can, I don't think you should die. You still have more. Jesus, you know this and that. But he went in a place of solitude where he can hear the voice of God. Where he can hear, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. This is my child. This is my son. My God. This, you created war. No, the people did their part. But we have to also trust the process. Because there is a gospel, a, 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 a microwavable gospel that is being preached. And I said it, it seems like God is some cosmic bellboy that leaves heaven and runs down and drops and run back and drop and everything that you ask for, name it and claim it and so and you will receive and in three months and in six months. Hello? Because the whole idea, the reason I'm saying the touch from Jesus is because it's only recorded in the book of Mark the first time and the only time that Jesus touched somebody twice. But while I'm reading this, I say, wait, it had other people that touched this man. That's why I say the right touch. Because... It had the Jewish people that would have touched him. The Roman people would have touched him. The people that brought him to Jesus would have held him. So he was touched on numerous occasions. And we had to be so careful as believers who really touch in our lives. Because it could be the devil will send the wrong people to say what we need to hear to lead us astray. And we get carried away. And then we realize we are down in the pit of hell and we want to know how we reach there. The old people used to say, friends, there's lead you. But they don't. But if you have good friends, they go lead you to Jesus, sir. Who is the answer for your soul? Who is the satisfier for your soul? Who is the deliverer of your soul? Who is the helper of your soul? Somebody say amen. amen. I, I, you understand what I'm preaching about this morning? The people, the process now is that Jesus took him away from the crowd. There are people who are temporary as, that we are holding on to permanently. There are people God allow in our lives that are there for a season to do what they need to do and then they move on. And there are people who come into our life that are there permanently. Our problem as believers and as human beings, we are mixing up the permanent with the temporary. And if we mix it up, we end up in problems. Because the temporal people needs to go, needs to leave, needs to get and do what they need to do somewhere else where the permanent people will be there for a lifetime. As I said before, if you have a true friend, they will tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. They will tell you the truth. Are you still with me? I'm going somewhere with this, right? So, think about this. Jesus took him from the people. They had good intentions. They wanted him to see. They wanted them to, be the, to see exactly and feel how they are feeling. But Jesus took them, took him from the people. Because there are people in our lives that really dearly love us. But they want the best for us. But there's a process that God is carrying us through. And if they are there all the time, we cannot fulfill the process. Because our expectation is that God do it now. God do it right away. And it could be that God wants you to go through a process. Yea, do I walk through the valleys of the shadow of that I shall fear no evil. 
If David did not go through the process, if um, um, Joseph did not go through the process, if Daniel did not go through the process, if Jesus did not go through the process, what would have happened? Are you understand what I'm saying? So he took him away from the people who meant good. And Jesus, <laughs> you see, if the people remain with you, what Jesus is going to do next, they ain't going to allow it. Think about that. Because Jesus wanted to carry him to something that only he could understand and he could do, Jesus could do. But if the people around, they go stop him because he is about to spit in the man's eye. And spitting is a sign of disrespect. Deacon Williams, you come and say, Pastor, I greet you too in my face. <laughs> I go hit your Holy Ghost slap. But in, in, in most of our Western and our culture, if you spit on someone, all right, I remember that. While I was studying this, I think about Ace Ventura, pet detective. Anybody ever watch that? And when he went into the culture uh, in Africa, the man <laughs> spit on him and he, he wiped it off. And he, they say, no, our culture is that if you respect and love somebody, you spit on them. So Ace Ventura pulled with everything that he had and he spit. And the chief walked out laughing, head to toe, running on with coal and spit. And he was feeling good. And people were saying, yes. This man, real of the chief. <laughs> Let me drink some water. I already spit on something. Hallelujah. If, if, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go and watch Ace Ventura, pet detective. Uh, now, in the Western world, I said, but again, I'm watching a movie called my big fat creek wedding and while looking at this i have time on my hand because at home a week and the only thing i could do is probably watch a movie and i decided i heard on the bbc that this movie celebrating how much years now and it was a, a movie that a romance comedy that grossed the most amount of money because nobody wanted to, to, to take the picture because the girl that acted in it, she wrote it. And Tom Hanks went to a church and see it as a play and decided to invest. And they, they make over $365 million in the opening. Now, all I said and done. What I looked at is that when her grandchildren came, she spit on them. And the man, her boyfriend, who is not Greek, he's... What going on there? And he said, she said to him, that in our culture is a form to ward off evil, to keep Satan away. Now, when she's marrying, coming up, the eyes, the whole crowd, to, to, to spitting on a wedding dress is a sign of blessings and to keep the devil away. What? does the Greek wedding, what does Ace Ventura have to do with my message? I'm glad that you asked. I'm glad that you asked. Two weeks are rested, right? So they expect me to finish now. What does Jesus have to do with spitting? Because this is not the first time that Jesus spits. The next time he spits in the mud and make a, a, a clay and anoints him on eye. But this time he spits directly in him on eye. No, imagine mm, you bring somebody here and tell them, Pastor Mikey, does well pray and he does do this. And when they come, I just watch them now and I. <laughs> you, because of the love for the person, you go grab them away. Or you go hold them back and say, Pastor, not so. No, can I put a disclaimer here? Don't go and spit on nobody. And tell them the Bible say that will bring healing. Don't go and spit on nobody, deacon. 
Because we might end up praying for you in hospital. <laughs> now, in the culture, spitting was something they saw different. Because a reading my history, a googling, and, and the emperor Vas, Vaspasian, uh, they said that um, one of the writers of, of the Roman, um, he recorded that a man went to the emperor because the emperor was considered to be God, and he had an eye problem, probably cataracts or something, and he went to the emperor and said, I, I believe that if you are, you are truly the God, that you can spit on my eye, and I will be healed. I will see and the writer says, Philly is his name, Philly the elder. He says that it is recorded that the man received his vision. Now this morning coming down, my eldest son has internet. And I was reading about some of the, the things that are in your spit. Do you know? You can remember what you read? Some of the things they say in our saliva it has a soul set of stuff that is, um, that is healing. Research it. I can't call it. What is, what's some of the things? Calcium. Magnesium. Some ca ca sodium carbide. Ca whatever. They read out that whole, because I was still, I couldn't remember. I should have written it down though. But what they were saying is that people who are fasting... The spit is pure because they digested nothing. And it will, if you spit on any wound or anything, it will bring healing. Don't want to spit on nobody? Because none are a little fast. <laughs> uh, but what Jesus did now, back to the scripture, I started to, why did Jesus spit on the man eye? And it could have been that the culture and with the Romans and all that was going on, and he spit on his eyes to say to the people, you know, this is what all you believe. All you believe, this have healing. And then he asked the man, he said, let me just give back the scripture here. And he come it, and he took the blind man by his hand, he took him away from the people, and let him out of the town, and he had had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him and he asked him, asked him if he saw. The man looked up and he said, well, I see men like trees. That's not what Jesus asked him. Jesus asked him, he's blind, if he saw. He didn't ask him what he saw. He asked him if he saw. And if you are blind and you can see something, then you would be saying, yes, yes, Jesus, I can see. I may not see clearly, but I can see. We're not going with that. Because some of us are like that. We are so caught up in what we want to see that we cannot answer what it is really happening because God has been so good to us. He has kept us. He has blessed us. He has protected us. He has kept us in a pandemic and people are asking, what did God do for you? And you should be so thankful that he kept me, that he protected me, that he kept my family. I didn't have to bury anyone. I didn't have to go to this. I didn't have to spend money. There. God is so good. But your answer, well, I could do with some more money. Well, I could do with a bigger house. Well, the children getting big and I need to extend. Well, I, I, I mean, I lost my job. I could do with a job. We should be thankful that we got up this morning. We should be thankful we opened our eyes this morning. We should be thankful that when we put our feet on the ground, that it felt there and it stayed there. And we did not have to complain that we don't have any feet and we don't have any hands. We should be thankful. Did Jesus say, Whoa, you, see, you see, he started to tell Jesus what he saw. And Jesus had to put his hands on him because he didn't want him going around seeing 
men as trees. He didn't want him going around treating people as objects and treating objects as people. Hallelujah. Because when he asked him and he started to give him what he see or he saw, Jesus touch him and he said, now what you see? And he looked up and he said, I can see clearly now. I can see good now. Oh, I can see good I know. I can see everything as it's supposed to be. So ask him, wait now, why did Jesus spit on him, ask him, and then touch him? So the only thing I could think about is to show, as I said before, all those who are there believing in the spit syndrome, that the spit could only lead you thus far. The spit, the saliva, could only do this much. But if you want total transformation, if you want total healing of your mind, body, and your spirit, and your flesh, if you want total transformation, man could only do that much. But when you come to God, when you come to Jesus, he does it perfectly. He gives you salvation perfectly. He gives you redemption perfectly. He gives you healing perfectly. Somebody praise God. I can't, I can't push this as I want, so I'll keep my voice down. You remember the, the, the man that, the ten lepers that came to Jesus, and one came back? He said, all, it wasn't ten all here, why one? And he said, well, I come to give thanks. Because he realized that it's only Jesus could do it. And the Bible says something that a lot of people don't, don't really pay attention to. The Bible says that this man, Jesus said, go, you're made whole. You could be healed and not be made whole. And Jesus touching this man was to tell people he might be healed or he's being healed, but I want him to be made whole. I want when he leave here that he don't have to come back and say, Jesus, you know, I can't see with this one again. Oh, I, can't, I don't have the vision anymore. I want him that when he leave here, he can go wherever he goes and people can say, that was a blind man. What does the writer say? I was blind, but now I see. But there's a part before that. He says, amazing grace. Hallelujah. Somebody should be Amazing grace. God don't want us to lose vision. God don't want us to have blurred vision. He wants us to see perfectly and clearly what is happening. Let me end this. Let me end this. Hope I didn't lose anybody. The people will be there. The process. But look at this. Jesus said to him, I don't want you going back in the tongue. I don't want you going back to tongue. No. I started to think about this. And in the new translation, he says, I don't want you to go back to tongue, and I don't want you to tell anybody. No, think about this. I was blind. I can't see. I depended on people to lead me, to carry me all where I want to go. But now that I'm touched by Jesus, what was a stumbling block? I now could put my foot over what was in my way. I can see clearly now. I don't want to tell nobody. I don't have to say nothing. Now, I got to come to church because you get information. I say, but why would Jesus tell him, man, don't want to tell nobody? It could be. That the uh, Sadducees and the scribe and all the religious leaders, they were bent on killing Jesus. And Jesus said, don't go and tell nobody because it was not his time to die. And it could be that if they continue to hear 
they might have acted beforehand and they may not be a cross for him they might have killed him in another way but Jesus said don't go and tell him anything don't go and say anything don't go back to town could be because at one time one time they held him lift him up to throw him over the wall because he tell the man thy sins be forgiven and they say only God could forgive sins you cannot be saying you are God you mad and the Bible says that when they could throw him over the wall he disappeared not his time and this and then he said to him, don't go and tell nobody and don't go back to town. I said, well, okay, but well, he came from Bethsaida. I'm a teacher now. He came from Bethsaida. So I started to look up at Bethsaida. The meaning, it was a fishing tongue. It was a hunting tongue. It was a tongue that Andrew, Peter, his brothers James and all of them came from it was close to Galilee so I said well, okay, why would Jesus tell this man to go back to Bethsaida and then I started to read again and in Matthew records that Jesus stood up and he said woe unto Pharisee and Bethsaida woe unto you because if this gospel that I'm preaching was preached to Sodom and Gomorrah, my God, they would have repented. Woe unto you. So it was considered a curse tongue. Tongue. It was considered that the Lord spoke against it. And he's telling him, to go back there. To go back to the weak and to the beggarly things that I call you from. Don't go back to the ways of your living that you used to live before. Don't go back to sin and go back to the things that will keep you down. Let me tell you this. I speak to people, addicts and so on. And they want to change. They want help. No coke man you talk to will tell you he loves what he's doing. No drug addict will tell you they love what they're doing. No wife beater will tell you I love what you're doing. No, you just put a, a title to it. They don't tell you that they love what they do. They always tell you, I want to come out of it. I want to come out. But here comes the alcoholic speaking. And he said, Pastor, pick me up, I will go to church. Pastor, I want to, I want to change. And I say, okay, when I call to find out the day before, friends take him up. And the friends carry him back to town. The friends encourage him back to the town. Hallelujah. We have to be so careful as believers that Jesus, uh, my God, heal us, deliver us, give us salvation and change and we are new creatures we we are brand new person why are we going back to town why are we going back to Bethsaida why are we living a double standard life because let me tell you this Jesus tell a blind man don't want to tell nobody but now he's walking different there's transformation the things that are used to be this way, now we can see clearly. So people are seeing his walk. People are looking at your walk. You can talk scriptures. You can sing gospel. You can have worship. People are looking at what you do. And your life should be preaching the gospel. Saying, I'm going to cool my voice down. I'm going to end. I tell the children, and I said it last time, I said, none of us should be cussing. Because you never heard me curse. I hear the big one. Use some. And I know it can't be for me. The, the reason I'm saying that, sometimes as parents, 
Anybody real here? Sometimes as adults, they get under your skin. Mr. Maria, I see you shake your head. And you really want to tell them how you feel. But because you know you have a God who you have to answer to, you might cuss in your mind. You might... But because you need to live by example, you're saying, I ain't going down that road. Because once it come out, no child is going to forget. Daddy, do that to you know. Daddy cuss you know. And you correcting them and them children bowl out, they go tell you. But dad, you can't tell me. I was cussing and you're cussing. Hallelujah. I want to tell you this morning. Thank God for the people. Thank God for the process. But also thank God for your progress. Thank God for your progress. That you're here. In 2022 and you're still alive and you're mature enough to know that the people who push me who agitated me who, who have hey get it done you could do you could do it you could do it you could do it you might get on your nerves but they mean well somebody's gonna say no enough is enough get out of that you need to stand up you need to say hey I am a child of God I am a victor I am victorious and if you're looking online, as we pray, now is your time. Take it back. Somebody shout, take it back. Uh, give me, just keep the car running there. I, I just pulled outside, but the car running. I need to say this. Hallelujah. I need to say this. The reason I say take it back is because the blind man that is recorded here, he got back his sight. He was not born blind from birth. Let me tell you why. If he had been born blind from birth, when Jesus asked him, what do you see? He have, would have never been able to explain a seen a tree or a seen a man. That means he lost his sight. So he knew what a tree looked like. And he knew what a man looked like. But Jesus touched him. And he restored whatever was lost. That is what I want to pong here this morning. Whatever was lost, come to Jesus. He will restore it. Whatever you're losing, come to Jesus. He will restore it. Don't walk about blind. Father, I pray this day. I know I kept your people at length. But I was planning this over two weeks. Father, help us to recognize this morning. There are people who love us. And who will care for us. Who pray for us. And we at times have to leave the people to come closer to you. We have time of to leave the crowd to spend some time alone with you. We have to trust the process that you're taking us through because we know our destination is the, 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 the road that we have to travel. That is what we have to trust. Our destination is heaven and why we live on this earth. Help us to trust you, O oh God. And trust in you. That when we pray and when we believe, O oh God, that you will bless our children that is going out to school and in schools. O oh God, we see what is happening. That you'll touch the teachers, O oh God, and give them the patience. That you'll touch our parents to lead and guide our children in the right way. And that we will come to you for the right touch. The right touch, God. Father, bless your people. In a remarkable way, Lord, that we will grow from strength to strength. That it will not be about you or me, but it will all be about you and I coming together to elevate the kingdom of heaven. Father, have your way. 
bless your people in Jesus name amen somebody amen and amen God bless you until another time until next week let's all stand there's a song he touched me